Okay, this video is going to be on testing a catalytic converter. Uh, the purpose of the catalytic converter on the vehicle is to um, help oxidize hydrocarbon and carbon monoxide and it's to reduce the amount of oxygen in oxides of nitrogen. And so usually most of our catalytic converters nowadays have um, two beds at least, sometimes three. And uh, the beds are going to be made out of platinum, palladium, and rhodium. And two of the beds are going to be um, adding oxi ox oxygen to the chemicals. Um, so that's an oxidation bed. It's going to oxidize hydrocarbons, going to oxidize carbon monoxide. And the other bed is going to reduce the uh, oxidation. So it's going to remove oxygen. So usually the exhaust goes through the first part of the catalytic converter, um, which is the reducing bed, pulls the oxygen out, stores it in the catalytic converter. If you refer back to our chapter uh, lecture, um, I talk a little bit about the oxygen storage in that uh, chapter. It stores the oxygen there, and then in the, the second uh, bed, where the oxidation portion of the, of the catalytic converter, it uses that extra oxygen that it just pulled out of the um, oxides of nitrogen, and it combines the oxygen with the hydrocarbon, the carbon monoxide, to form CO2 and H2O. So perfect combustion coming out of the tailpipe should be CO2 and H2O. Um, so let's take a look. Now on this catalytic converter, uh, to test the catalytic converter, there's two different ways you can do it, two easy ways to do it anyway. Uh, first of all, you can look at it on the five gas. So we're going to start the vehicle up, we're going to rev the engine up, and we're going to watch the five gas analyzer to see when the, the catalytic converter lights off. Typically a cat doesn't uh, start working until it reaches about 600 degrees Fahrenheit. That takes a few minutes. And so we're going to watch it light off and then we'll watch the, the reduction in the hydrocarbon carbon monoxide when that takes place. The other way that we're going to test the um, catalytic converter is with a thermometer. We're going to measure the intake of the catalytic converter and the, out, the output of the catalytic converter. And this is the sensor fact sheet that I uh, made available to you. I'm going to put this into Canvas in the, uh, at the bottom of the, the uh, lecture videos um, for the sensors. And so you can download this, you can hang on to it. I would suggest that you download this and laminate it, stick it on your toolbox. It's a really good um, work, uh, fact sheet for all the different sensors. So it tells you what the rule of thumb is for each one of these sensors here. So for your IAC, your MAP, MAF, TPS, and so forth. Um, if you scroll down to the bottom down here, it talks about the different uh, oxygen sensors. So what a one wire sensor is, two, three, four, five, and seven wire O2 sensors. And then it also gives you gas, uh, the five gas. Um, and this is what we wanted to look at. So these are the state laws and also federal laws. Um, for the state of Washington and also the feds. The feds. For hydrocarbon, uh, anything built after 1996, you're required to be below 50 parts per million hydrocarbon. Now, okay, we've got the, um, the five gas up and running. It's warmed up, it's ready to go. So we're gonna go ahead and look at the hydrocarbon carbon monoxide when we start the vehicle up. Let me position my camera so it's not glaring um, the, the lights on it. So we can see all the numbers now. So I'm going to go ahead and start the vehicle. So if you watch the video on setting up and using the five gas analyzer, you notice that when we first start up the vehicle, you're going to have a ton of hydrocarbons, a ton of uh, carbon monoxide, oxygen, stuff like that. So what we're doing on this one, we're watching to make sure that the catalytic converter is actually going to light off and do its job. So to make the catalytic converter light off, what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to get it warm. So I'm going to run the engine at about 2,000 RPMs and we'll watch the hydrocarbon and you can see when the, the catalytic converter uh, takes off.
you can see the catalytic converter um, as it's warming up you can see the hydrocarbons start to go down Looks like the catalytic converter is probably warm. It's starting to do its job. We're down to 37 parts per million on hydrocarbon. We're down to 0.09% carbon monoxide. So we're down to about 25% or 25 parts per million on hydrocarbon, 26 or 0 0.04 on carbon monoxide. 0.03 in carbon monoxide, so this catalytic converter seems to be working just fine. One thing to notice as you're watching the, the numbers on this is the vehicle's now at an idle. The catalytic converter tends to cool off a little bit at an idle, and so you'll see the numbers start to creep back up. So if you look at it, we're at 0 0.08 for carbon monoxide, we're at uh, 62 for hydrocarbon. And, but still the catalytic converter is doing its job. If you remember when we first started up the vehicle, we were almost at 200 parts per million for hydrocarbon, and now it's maintaining it down around 60, which is actually not too bad. Now if you noticed when we were doing our testing, we went down to 20 something for hydrocarbon. Now at an idle, we crept back up to 60% or 60 parts per million, which would be failing. So we would, we would pass at the running test, but we would fail at the, at the idle test. And then we're, um, for carbon monoxide, we are illegally allowed 0.5%, which we were well under that. With carbon monoxide, we were at 0 0.08, 0 0.09, even at an idle, um, I don't think we got up to 0.1. So um, that was really good. Um, and then oxides of nitrogen were allowed a thousand at wide open throttle and were allowed 12 to 15 um, during, during running. And, and if you were looking at the, the gases, I think we were at around 40. Now why are our numbers a little bit high? Uh, the engine that I'm using is the Pontiac Grand Am engine and it doesn't see any freeway use. It sees a lot of abuse. We're always doing all kinds of tests to it and stuff and the catalytic converter is probably loaded up and needs to be replaced. But on a typical car, this is what you should see. And on most cars, once the catalytic converter lights up, you're gonna see hydrocarbons that are well below the 50 parts per million uh, that, are, that um, are allowed. So that's what our standards are. So let's go back and we'll test the, the uh, catalytic converter uh, with a thermometer and see what's going on there. While the engine's running, what we're going to do is we're going to measure the temperature on the inlet of the catalytic converter on this side, and then we're going to measure the temperature on the outlet. And there should be a big, a pretty good difference in temperature on uh, the inlet and the outlet. What we're going to be using is we're going to be using one of these uh, infrared temperature guns. And so I've got it set up here so that you'll be able to see when I measure the inlet, and then you'll be able to see when I measure the the outlet of the catalytic converter. So I'm going to go ahead and start the vehicle up, warm up the catalytic converter, and then we'll test it. Okay, I've had the engine running for a little bit, so we'll see what the temperature is on the inlet. We're at 220, about 220 degrees, and on the outlet, we're at 435, 450 degrees. So um, because we have a temperature differential, that means the catalytic converter is working. The, catalyst inside the catalytic converter when it burns off the uh, gases, so when it oxidizes hydrocarbon and carbon monoxide and when it reduces NOx, it creates heat. And so you should see a big difference between the, the front side. Now if you notice the cat's cooling off a little bit, we got 300 and something here, 400 here. So it's not as big of a spread because it's been sitting here idling for a minute or two. So this has to be done with the engine uh, running, so preferably if you have somebody revving the engine while you reach underneath the car and do the measurements, that's the best way to measure to see if the catalytic converter is working. So that's how you test a catalytic converter with both the five gas and with a th uh, thermometer.